What up boys and welcome back to another video. So as always, every single Wednesday I upload a video for the current series that we got going on, which is at the moment me selecting out dungeons and then I farm them a hundred times and then I come back, I save all the loot and I show you guys what I received, how I ran it and uh, we can pretty much determine if I got lucky, if I was really unlucky, if that's just like the average, it's really hard to uh, determine the average on a dungeon like this because I've done multiple times a hundred dungeons getting like insanely good results and then I do a hundred more of that dungeon and I get like 25% of what I received on the first set of 100 dungeons. So that's really hard to say. But it really depends on what kind of drops you get. If it's based on like these super big ticket items. Or if it's just like a steady flow of items. But however, in today's video, we're going to do Wailing Caverns. And uh, I'm a big sucker for Wailing Caverns. It's uh, located right as you guys can see. Right here in the Northern Barrens right down here and uh, the only annoying thing about whaling caverns as i show you guys the route that we're going to go through is um uh, is the way you get out of whaling caverns because the graveyard is like outside to be able to enter whaling caverns you have to like walk through the caves and then you can go into the instance so if you do use the uh panda scenario or you use like uh the uh, looking for group system to get in and out of the dungeon. It's not going to port you directly outside the dungeon. You're going to be like outside the cave in the open world. And uh, you're going to have to manually run in. So in my uh, opinion, the best way to do reset it after finishing up a run. Is by doing it on a class that can uh, use like a class port. Such as the monk or the druid. And then you simply use for instance dreamwalk. And once you've used the dreamwalk. You will have to wait a minute for cooldown. But while you're in uh, the emerald dreamway. You can just vendor the trash items. Really important that you guys actually reset the instance. Before you port back. Because that way you're going to be at the spawn inside the instance. And every mobs are going to be up. So um. I'm going to show you guys that at the end of this run. So this is actually a dungeon where it's really good to have a, a fast tune, like a speed set. Since we're doing the tactic of porting uh, back out and then porting back in again, and you have to wait a minute for this to get off cooldown, you got to do the runs in five minutes to be able to uh, make it a complete six minutes with that one minute cooldown. So you always want six minutes per run, right? So you can do 10 runs the maximum in exactly an hour. So if you have a speed set, you're going to be able to run through the entire dungeon in uh, less than 5 minutes. Sometimes you don't even need a, need a speed set, like if you're really focused. Um, and then make sure you pour it out and pour it back in again. But it's it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you guys spend 7 minutes on each run, you're going to be able to uh, run it in a finite amount of time. Because you guys will have... Uh, like no time pressure as I do because whenever I farm dungeons I do it on stream and I do it in a ludicrous challenge which is based on a one hour session so I gotta get as many runs in as possible in one hour so you guys can see that I simply just follow the dungeon as it's meant to be played right and uh, I kill all the bosses open up every single chest that can be opened I uh, would definitely advise you guys to bring a profession with a uh, that allows you to open up chests unless you're doing it on a rogue. So like inscription, engineering, blacksmithing, jewel crafting, and so on. So you have some ways of opening up the lock the chest. Because they have a higher chance at containing blue items. And they do contain a lot of green items. Which is absolutely insane. Because obviously we're going to talk about why you should do Wailing Caverns. Why it's so good. And what you can expect to get. So the reason why I love Wailing Caverns and why you should do it. Is because of the green items. Like scrap the blue items. There's close to no good blue items in Wailing Caverns. The only way to get good, good blue items in Wailing Caverns. Is if you run it on the low level. So the blue items doesn't scale. Like the Gloves of Fang and so on. So it's simply uh, going for green items. But there are not any green items. I mean you're talking about some of the most popular sets in the game. In terms of cell rate. It's uh, sets such as the Aboriginal, the Ceremonial, the Grizzly, the Barbaric, and so on. Like These sets have really good sell rate. On most realms, they have really good value as well. So uh, that's why I want to run this dungeon. You can also get a Battle Pet, the uh, Deviate Hatchling. But 
they tend to uh, have a, well they have a market value of like 8k I believe but they tend to go for only a couple thousand gold each uh, depends on your realm obviously but that's like on old realms that I play on they go for like 2k a pop so they're not that good. The ceremonial, the grisnally, the aboriginal, and so on is where you're going to make your gold. But as you guys can see, after finishing the left side, I'm now moving over to the right side. And as most dungeons, there's not really like a specific route that you have to take. You just follow the dungeon, kill everything that you uh, come across, make sure you loot it, open up the chests. The only thing with this dungeon, as it is kind of long and there's not that many mobs, and you won't have that much time, you should skip the uh, the boss in the middle right here, the Murloc boss. I've never killed that one while farming this one, simply because there just isn't enough time. However, I know there's druids out there with like over 200% movement speeds, other classes too, of course, which might be able to run left side, right side, and then go and kill the Murloc boss in less than five minutes so they can pour it out and go back in again. But for me, that's definitely not an option, uh, but I still just, I still managed to uh, get a lot of mobs dead and uh, get a lot of loot. So, in the end, it's all about having fun. Don't worry too much about it, just run the dungeon with whatever class you feel comfortable running it with, and whatever class you enjoy farming it with. So after coming up to these guys, you're gonna kill them off, and you're done. Like, this is where you should port out using the dream walk. You can, as I said, jump down here and go for the Murloc boss if you're really, really fast. But this is the important part. I'm going to show you guys when we're done uh, showing the loot that I received. But it's really important when you port back, doesn't matter if you use the monk port or the druid port or whatever, is that you reset the dungeon. Either if you have it on your loot appraiser or on your frame. Like, reset the dungeon before you port back. Otherwise, you're going to be ported, like as I said, in the world map and not in the instance itself. But uh, speaking of loot, let's see what we got before we port back. So this is all the items that I did receive. You guys can see I got 15 of the Deviant Hatchlings and as I said, market value is actually 9.2k, but they go for 1.4k on my realm. In terms of blue items, I got quite lucky. I mean, these ceremonial leggings, as I said, they have a market value of nearly 28,000 gold, but they're going for 43,000 gold in my realm. And they tend to go quite often for like way more than market value. So does a lot of these other items too. Uh, and they have a sell rate of 0 0.05, which is insanely good for an item of this value. Then we got the uh, Aboriginal leggings, 6k, sell rate of 0 0.02 is not that good. The Barbaric Loincloth Leggings, 12k market value, 0.04 sell rate, which is good for that market value, but they're only for 2k on my realm right now, so there's no way I would sell it at that value. The Prospector Wooly, 0.02, 9k market value, 27k market value, 10k apart for these, but 16 on my realm. Grizzly's Chest is actually 14k market value, but 37,000 gold in my realm. Shitty likes, 10k value, it's a bad shield. I'm not sure why I uh, why I still save this one. The ceremonial chest is actually not that good. Market value of 8k, but only 1500 in my realm. We got the prospector gloves, 0 0.03 sell rate, good for gloves. We got these mystic gloves, barbaric boots. We got the buccaneers boots, 0 0.04, really good for boots. And we got the prospector boots, once again, insane sell rate, good value. We got the Spellbinder robe, not that good, but robes always sell. We got the Barbaric Cloth Vest, the Lupine Cord, the uh, Schematic worth, well, market value 12k, but 400 gold in my realm, Lupine Gloves, and the Mystic Wrap. And that's what we received. So the total value of this, if I use my, uh, my macro, is going to be... Let's see, 276,000 gold. But you guys saw most of these items, especially the ceremonial and eventually the grizzly and the aboriginals. I will sell them for more than market value. But then again, like the battle pets, I will sell for way less than market value. But I've always loved whaling caverns. I've done whaling caverns many, many times and I've always ended up making a lot of gold with it simply because of these popular sets. So 
It's a great dungeon to begin with if you're guild farming because you're getting a lot of popular items. It's a great dungeon to do if you're like already into the Transmog game but you don't feel like your auctions are selling. Then go ahead, go and fill it up with some Whale and Caverns items, some items that will actually sell. Well, pretty fast, but when I say pretty fast, it's like pretty fast compared to other Transmog items. It's not like it's going to fly off the auction house like materials, for instance. So uh, 276k is... Uh, not even close to one of her best dungeons in terms of market value, but it's way easier to sell these items than many of the other dungeons that we have done. And last but not least, you guys can see me use the Dreamwalk second time to get ported back. And once I use this one, I will be inside the, uh, the instance and I'm ready to do a new run. So that was basically it for Whale and Cavern. It's pretty easy to do as of route and the items is, is great. It really is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, bye bye.